guys and welcome back to my channel. The case that I'm going to be looking into today is the case of Bill and Peggy Stevenson. It's actually been in the news because so I don't actually even know why but somehow they're thinking that they have some sort of ties with Delphi, with the Delphi murders. I don't, I genuinely don't know. It's not, they're not looking into Richard Allen who's obviously the suspect who's going to be tried in the case of the girl's murders. But I don't know, something has led them to the Delphi area and what the connection could be, I am not sure. But um, I thought it was a very interesting case when I researched into it because honestly it's kind of crazy what happened. But yeah, let's just get into it. It's not a suggested case. This, I found it just through looking up the Delphi murders because obviously that is a case that's very close to my heart and I keep trying to keep myself updated on it. And yeah, I just came across this, so let's jump in. Bill Stevenson, he was a lovely man. He actually ended up, well, he was from a massive family, one of 14 children, and he was the oldest. He also had lots of, as you can imagine, there's 14 of them. You know, a lot of them will go on to have children, maybe two, three, so you can imagine there's a lot of nieces, nephews in the picture as well. So that just made the big family even more huge. And Peggy, who would end up being his wife eventually, she came from a lot smaller family. She had one brother and one sister. Now, the pair actually met on this Boone County dairy farm. And by the 25th of August in 1956, they were hitched. They began, they were very happy together. They were such lovely, nice people. They were very religious as well. And they started their family together. They ended up having two sons and one daughter. And of course, once more, they had children of their own, which meant that they had grandchildren. I believe they had seven in total grandchildren. They even had one great grandchild too. Oh, I forgot to mention where they lived. This was, they actually lived in Florence in Kentucky. Now, this case happened in 2011. And around about that time is when Bill and Peggy were getting ready to celebrate their 55th. 55th? Why did that sound so strange to me? 55th wedding anniversary together. They, of course, over the years had built their lives together. They had their huge family. And not only that, um, Bill also ran this sort of truck stop thing. It was something called something like Truckers Chat. Basic Travel America Truck Stop in Florence, right? He'd ran this place for years. And of course, a lot of truckers would come by. They would stop. And so Bill would know, end up knowing a lot of different people, a lot of truckers. Peggy was more of a housewife. And of course, they, like I said, they had seven children. So, you know, it probably made more sense for her to stay at home with the kids. They were very much part of their community. They were loved by many people. They were just such... A very nice couple. They were also very giving and very charitable. They they just were lovely people. Now in 2011 the pair decided that they were gonna move and they moved to this condo at Ridge Edge Court. It was in a different subdivision of Florence. Now bearing in mind that they moved here in 2011, probably around about the beginning of the year, the case that sadly would tear these families apart happened in on the 29th of May in 2011 so they had not lived in this condo very long at all which is even more sad like I don't know do you wonder that the fact that they moved there is why this happened or we'll, we'll get into it so let me take you to the Saturday which was the 28th of May 2011 it was Memorial Day sort of weekend they spent the time with family, friends, had a brilliant day. They were also really looking forward to, as I told you, they were religious, the normal Sunday service that they were going to go at the Baptist church. Um, Peggy actually played organ as well at the church and she'd done that for 42 years, which is a very long time and she loved it. So, you know, everyone was expecting to see them at the church on Sunday, which would have normally happened. Except this time it didn't. The church was 11 minutes away from their home, not far at all. They were always there. Bill, at this point, he was 74 years old. He was semi-retired. He used to be an insurance investor, I think. And obviously, he did this truck stop worship thing. It was, it was, you know, pretty popular. 
And so he was a very religious man and to not turn up on this Sunday when he normally would have was very, very strange. It did concern a lot of people. Peggy also wasn't there, like I said. And so people got worried and they went to check on him. Well, for starters, they rang. That was the first pot call. They tried to bring them, but there was no answer and that just made them more worried. And so that is when they decided to go round. They actually told a family member actually was the one that decided to make the drive over. And when they got there, there was no obvious signs of anything wrong. You know, like the no, a window hadn't been smashed. There was no broken down door, no signs of burglary or anything like that. Or anything untoward, outside at least. Where, but when they went inside of the home, they came across a horrific scene. Bill and Peggy were deceased, having been murdered. Basically, they were bludgeoned and stabbed to death which as you can imagine must have been horrific to find. And then strange things in this case as well because obviously they called the police, the police came round, they never found the murder weapon, they found that some items in the room had been moved around and that the scene had definitely been staged. It was thought that the killer had spent several hours in this house so they had murdered the pair and then they still st stuck around for several hours, probably setting up the scene after they they moved family photos out of a room into a different one it was really strange like something that you wouldn't even think would matter to anybody like a family picture from one room to another it was just really weird and every single room in the house had been staged like that um in different obviously various different ways but you know what i mean there had been things placed around their bodies their bodies had also been posed the house had been thoroughly cleaned. Apparently they left a signature message somewhere, but the police never told. They're keeping a lot of things close to the best. Like they know what the murder weapon was, but they haven't released what it is. Um, they also know exactly when Bill or Peggy, I'm not sure which, because they haven't released that, died because one of them had a medical device within them. So probably like a pacemaker or something like that. So they know exactly the time that this person died but they're not releasing that they've only released said that they passed away between 1 and 4 a.m kind of thing so they know more than what they are telling us but obviously a lot of investigations do that anyway to try and keep things back for the trial and things like that so you know that's just normal but it, like i said it's just really strange that this person spent so long in the house arranged all these different things not only that there was the uh, the way in which the photographs were arranged, it was as if they liked some people and didn't like other people, which how closely did they know Bill and Peggy? Like, really? And even the detective stated that it was as if the killer wanted this all to be found. You know, they spent a long time setting this up. They'd cleaned up after themselves. They did things like take things off of shelves, off of tables and put them on shelves and put them on tables, turn things around, flip them over do marks on them honestly just pretty really really strange and let me just tell you a little bit here about the condo complex now it wasn't really super easy to get into there was only like one way in one way out it was a buzzer system and it was said that the Stevensons would have never allowed anybody into the house that they didn't know again makes you think whoever did this they must have certainly known they were very cautious people they were lovely people but very cautious in that sense and I mean who damn right you should be in these days they also wouldn't give their address out to anyone random so you know like if they knew a lot of trucks and things they wouldn't just give out their address willy-nilly and not only that they only had one bedroom so it's not like they would be asking people and telling them that they can come and stay over because they didn't have the room for that so it's just strange law the police actually described the scene as some some aspects of the scene as ritualistic they also thought that maybe the staging of everything was to try and hide where they actually came in and how they gained access to the property it's believed that their intent was to kill peg bill and peggy and so it's premeditated homicide um they'd planned it all out and also um, some of the injuries to one of the bodies actually occurred two hours post death postmortem i don't know how angry was this person at them i suppose it is thought that like i've said about how angry they could have been it's thought that maybe this could have been over some sort of religious issues and practices and that they didn't believe that 
you know, how they were doing it was correct or something. I don't know. They also did find DNA within the home in multiple places, all from the same person. This DNA is not in the database. They also said it is not suitable for phenotyping, you know, where they get the image of the person or what they possibly could look like from the DNA or genealogy. Not sure why, whether there's just the tiniest of sample and it's not enough to do that, I'm not sure. Or they don't want to waste it on that. Not necessarily waste, but you know what I mean? If no matches come back and they only have a tiny little sample, they don't want to put all their eggs in one basket and then it not work, essentially. The problem with this case is that, like I said, Bill knew a lot of truckers. So he knew people all over the US of A who would come in, come out, stop there all the time. It could be literally anyone who knew him. Literally anybody. Could be someone close, could be a friend, family member, could be one of these guys. Who actually knows? Guys or girls? Who actually knows at this point? Well, the law enforcement don't really. So now let's get how it's how it's potentially tied in with the Delphi case. I know in November of 2022, a tip led investigators to Delphi. And then one of the de detectives working on the case, a Detective Cox, actually said this about it. Now I'm just going to read it over that way so that I get it right. We had received some information from an individual regarding the Delphi murders in Indiana and they had said, for all those reasons, we believe it may be the same person that was involved in the Stevenson case. There's things that will make you really interested in a case, simply more than just somebody saying, hey, we think this person might have been involved. But we had a little piece of information that really made the case specifically interesting to us. So that is what they said about it. Like I said, they don't actually think it's Richard Allen, but they were straight away looking between a possible connection between the two murders. And apparently this information led them to a person who had a specific item of interest to them. And again, this person wasn't Richard. The police, the detective, has also said that he will not tell us what this item is. Again, they're keeping everything close to the chest. And yeah, they've just been following somebody around with regards to this item of interest that they believe exists. At which point, um, they're still really re reiterating that it's nothing to do with that he was already in jail at this point. They've also urged that anybody with any information contact their office on the number, which again, I'm just going to read. Let me find it. 3342175. There is a $50,000 reward for any information that could be given. And yeah, that's pretty much all the information we have so far. Um, I genuinely am very interested to know how it's linked to the Delphi murders. Like, if it's not the same person that did it, how is it linked? Obviously, it's led them to this item, but how is that in relation to the Delphi murders? I'm, I don't understand it. If anybody knows more information on it or understands it better than me, please let me know in the comments below. But yeah, I just found this case really fascinating. It happened in 2011. So that is, what, 22 years ago now? Um, it's a very long time. They are still looking into it. They are still following leads and getting tips. And hopefully... You know, they've got no new information recently that maybe this case can finally be solved because Peggy and Bill deserve that. They deserve justice. They deserve to find out which monster did this to them. Especially all the horrific things that happened to them, all the staging, everything. Just that, that takes a certain kind of person. And that certain kind of person, you wonder whether they could potentially do it again. Because... They spent hours in that home setting it all up. It sounds like, I don't know, it's very sadistic and like serial killer vibes to me. Anyway, that's that's my opinion on it. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying that that's the kind of, I don't know, the feeling I get off it, which is pretty damn scary. But yeah, that is the end of this case. If you guys have enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for similar content. Anyway, that's all I have today on Bill and Peggy Stevenson. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.